Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week, new Lego ideas entries and general industry news from time to time as well. However, I do think we don't have any this week. Anyhow, information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. Let's get started right away. As always, we will start with due to alphabetical order with Blue Bricks. And here we have an announcement. Actually, the only one for this week. Ulm Church, the 105709. The city of Ulm is a relatively small city uh, over here in the southern Germany in the state of Baden-Württemberg. Um, and one of the key things is, I mean, first of all, it's a pretty large church. It's actually the largest non-Catholic church that we have over here in Germany. And the tower here is uh, has been completed in 1890. It is 161.53 meters in height. That makes it the highest church tower in the world. At least that's what we tell each other over here in Germany. Anyhow, this architecture set has 1,600 pieces. It is roughly 13 by 27 centimeters in space and 32, 31 centimeters in height. So it is purely architecture, means small pieces, and a rather abstract representation of the original church. But um, what can I say? I think it is a beauty. I have myself lived in that city for two years, I think. Actually, I went to university there. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I definitely intend to build it. Keep in mind, this is a blue brick special, so you don't get a paper manual, but only a digital one. And yeah, the pieces come in a rather simple box um, shipped. This is actually different with the Blue Bricks old fishing boat. That is a so-called Blue Bricks Pro, usually um, manufactured by Zingbao. However, it's not guaranteed. As always, Blue Bricks is not telling you, but usually it means Zingbao. So you're getting Zingbao pieces, Zingbao boxes, Zingbao menu style. Um, however, it is fully rebranded to Blue Bricks Pro. This is actually one of the very few sets. We haven't seen this much. Um, this actually used to be a Blue Brick special. Um, like the church is going to be, and then has been transitioned into uh, a Blue Bricks Pro. But however, I do not have any insights yet, and no reports out of the community actually who has manufactured it. That's why there's a couple of question marks there. Anyhow, nothing has changed in pricing. So I actually built this one, the Blue Bricks Special variant, a couple of months back. It still has 1,293 pieces and you still pay 50 euros over here in Europe. As always, that includes tax and that makes it 3.9 cents a piece. Rather typical price uh, for Bluebox Pro. Let's move on to the Foranga uh, sailing ship, the White Swan, 1,672 pieces. There is the first availability um, in, in China. You can import this out of China for around $57 US. That is including shipping into Germany. Obviously, it depends on where you are living. Um, and this one is 10 centimeters width, um, 41 in height and 66 in length. And I personally think it is rather a beauty. I mean, it is one of, you know, it's from the, from the great era of, of sailing uh, ships, um, you know, trade vessels sailing around the world, pretty fast ship, I can't imagine. And it is an actual beauty, I must say. What I cannot say based on these pictures, if we're talking about pet printed here or all these are all going to be stickers, I actually do not know. Foranga sets, I have built um, dinosaurs from them and there at least the eyes of the dinosaur has been pet printed. So I actually do not know. But nevertheless, um, Bawea, as mentioned, is asking for $57 roughly. That's 3.4 cents a piece. Then we, uh, the same way from Foranga, we have an announcement, the 850 Eight, the beauty store, 539 pieces. Um, again, here we have availability from Bawea out of China, $24 US. Blue Bricks, actually, German shop, um, has announced that they will get this set, but not yet a price and not yet availability. And yeah, here we go. It is a beauty store and I think it's rather beautiful. I mean, I've talked about this before. I'm a huge fan of these small buildings. It's like... It's like uh, a shrinked version of a modular building, right? And Forang is doing a lot of these. Keyplay has them. Uh, Kada has, has been doing a few from X Sandbox, I think, was the designer. 
Do I recall that correctly? I'm not 1% sure. But in, like, in, the, in the ballpark of, let's say, 16 to 18 stats, width and depths. And that, of course, and that of course includes that it's not built on a, on a base plate. And that means they run rather beautifully with the new street system from LEGO, actually better than, than LEGO modulars do, because they are on base plates, which are not really fitting very well to the new system. So um, coming back, having small buildings like these and having the new street system actually allows you, I don't know, if you have a regular shelf and not, I don't know, an entire basement for your city, but just a couple of shelves. And this could be a perfect option to build your own miniature city that is almost like a big one, uh, almost like one that is based on regular modular size buildings. And with that, I mean, of course, 32 by 32 base plate based buildings. So uh, having more buildings in that ballpark and that size is actually good news, if you ask me. Anyhow, let's move on to Funhole. And here we have another announcement. They are at set number nine. I mean, that company is busy and, and just in a steady pace, like they constantly announce new sets, like almost every second week, um, but just one by one. So it's not on waves like many other vendors do, but um, yeah, they just move forward. Um, and I think they're doing a great job. All the sets that I have built from them so far has been great. I built the steampunk train, steampunk... Uh, station um the castle on the cliff i've built and ocean adventure all great sets especially the latter ones um i mean no i mean ocean on the cliff was actually the the and the piece quality was not that well, but the others are all based on Gobrex, really beautiful. And now, of course, they have announced the Lighthouse of Alexandria. I've talked about this one before. Uh, and now here we go with the House of Sweets. So 986 pieces, and it's a Christmas set. And I think it's rather beautiful. Funhole is asking for $71 and something uh, US. Um, that is roughly around seven or two cents a piece. Again, as always, I usually when you see prices here, it's shipping into Central Europe. Um, obviously it depends on where you're living, what the shipping is going to be, um, customs, etc., etc. So as always with Funhole, it includes a light kit. And I think, yeah, it's, it's actually, I'm not a big fan of Christmas sets. Usually I think Lego has a couple that I do like, but I think this one here is beautiful, especially with the lighting. Um, and again, gingerbread houses also not really my cup of tea, but this one I like. I mean, it's it's like always with these fun old sets. It's like a lamp in bricks, and that is a rather good idea, I think. Let's move on to Zembo. Actually, didn't I have two Zembo sets? No, it's the only one. Um, here we have availability of the Sunflower Bouquet, the 601222. It's 1,050 pieces um, and it's a ton of sunflowers. Um, and Blue Bricks, actually the vendor in this case, over in Europe, again, as always, includes tax. Um, that's roughly around 30 euros, 2.9 cents a piece. With that, we are coming to Mold King, and here I think we have a great news, at least for many car enthusiasts. The IS Valkyrie sports car, the 10016, has been announced or is available actually again at Bawir, $46 US, 4.1 cents a piece. The great thing is, this is a Firas Abuyaba design, and I'm pretty sure I've pronounced this completely wrongly. And here, of course, there have been a lot of fears in the community that after. It, it turned out that he has also been the designer behind the Rail Bricks Daytona SP3 in 1.16 scale, the 11026. At least that's again, a Rail Bricks doesn't put the designer's name on the on the package, but everyone is pretty sure that this is his design. Of course, there were a lot of fears in the community that because also Young. Um, is no longer working with Mold King, at least. Um, all his sets and designs are now coming to Morg. And of course, another very beloved designer from Mold King has been uh, Firas Abu Yaba. So there were for sure folks who had feared that, you know, this time is also over. But so we have good news now. We have a new car, a new design from him. Uh, from Mold King. And this specific thing has uh, 1,136 pieces. I'm actually right now not pretty sure what the Valkyrie to which car brand is belongs. As always with Mold King, they don't license uh, any car brands, at least to my knowledge, they never have. Um, but anyhow, I think it's a rather beautiful design. I'm not sure if I like the tires, but everything else looks rather beautiful. The other thing is here, these one by one, one, one third um, um, slopes, I think they are in dark, trans dark black, something, uh, dark, trans black. 
whatever. Um, I, I'm not so sure if I really like that piece, but everything else, at least on these pictures, looks rather beautiful. As always, system build. So I guess in the Lego world, the closest thing is the creator, the former creator expert cars. Anyhow, let's move on. Then there's also a tank, a T34 medium tank by B by Mold King, the 20015. Again, we have availability here in China, $50 US, roughly 3.6. 6.3 cents a piece. However, the more important thing is, of course, there's electrics included. So we have a regular RC remote as well. You can use your smartphone. And yeah, I mean, it's a tank, it's remote controlled. Actually, not really my cup of tea, to be honest. But for all of you out there who like, you know, drive around a tank through your living room, this is good news, I guess. As always, Mode King, usually you have pretty high piece quality and I would say pretty decent pricing. And then there's another thing, actually a set that I do not really understand because Molking is doing a new botanical garden. They had another one before. So let's roughly take a look at this. Don't I? Oh. Oh shit, I don't have an English title title for this one. So anyhow, um, just ignore this German thing here. Um, they have done a botanical garden before. That was actually a collaboration with the designer Berthel. Bertil, uh, I guess he's Dutch, right? Anyhow, uh, 16019, 2,403 pieces. That's the old set. And I think it was a rather beautiful design. You could, it was based on a replicable uh, design that you could also get there. Actually, I have, as always, both the link to all designs that have been done from uh, Bertil and um, also the direct link to the replicable page. Anyhow, this is not the set we are talking about. This is, is the original Botanical Garden. I, I've actually built this one rather beautiful set. I can highly recommend it. And now they have done this thing, which I don't know. <laughs> it is smaller. Um, it has roughly half the pieces. Um, and it is blue. And I don't know. Um, I mean, of course, you can save a buck, right? Because it is a smaller set. But I don't really know what they think, why they think it is a good idea to make one in blue. I don't know. I mean, there is, there is, you know, something for everyone. Um, so if you don't like the rather boring tan black version that I would call beautiful, call beautiful, but instead you say no, it needs to be baby blue. That's the thing. Well, I guess for those of you who who love this kind of thing, um, you have now an alternative. So a second botanical garden from Mold King. Have fun with it. Let's move on to Moyo. And here we have an announcement or availability actually for an optionally motorized Technic set, the Yesco sports car. Uh, Yesco, I guess that um, is, um, is related to the Königsegg Yesco. I think that's a German supercar brand. Actually, I don't know much. I'm, I'm not really a car guy. My apologies. Anyhow, it is a Technic set. You can remote control it. Usually Moyo should be Gobrex pieces as well. So I do expect a high piece quality. Uh, it has 1,116 pieces. That's almost everything I know about it. And as I said, you can get optionally a remote control version. And yeah, here we go. Um, the non-motorized version is 45 um, roughly US dollars and um, if you want to add the motorized version you have basically to put uh, around 24-25 bucks into the pot as well. So for all of you Technic fans I think that is a good message because it rather looks quite nice I must say as a non-car guy. And here we go from fast cars we come into art and here Fantasy has announced uh, and actually made available in their own shop at this point in time the Ukiyo uh, Kanagawa Surfing and I'm pretty sure I've completely messed up the pronunciation. That's of course the very famous uh, Great Wave of Kanagawa uh, woodblock print uh, that was made by the Japanese ukiyo -e artist Hokusai, probably made in the late 1830s. Oh my god, that was a lot of complicated words, but I guess all of you know that. There's been also for the LEGO fans out there a lot of discussion around, is LEGO going to make one of these? We had LEGO ideas entries on this specific piece of art, and I think Fantasy has here a new interpretation that is rather beautiful, I must say. I mean, I'm actually a huge fan. I'm not sure if I like this, the, these gold. Uh, things here in the front, but everything else, the piece itself, the boats, um, uh, the nano figures, 
it all is pretty beautiful. Like, actually, I do think the nano figures is something that uh, Le Lego has a design on. So this could be complicated, but I'm not I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a legal expert, but I do, I do know for sure that there have been companies who had to throw these out of their sets due to legality problems with Lego's um, IP. Uh, on this one but anyhow I think it is a beautiful design I really like it and I think yeah there's not so much to say about it besides price um, so in their own store again that is with shipping into Europe that's the shipping I always use um, it's eight and a half cents a piece that is not cheap so fantasy sets usually are not fun hole are neither but fun hole usually has electrics in it so here yeah you have to pay for everything but in general I would maybe wait until a couple more shops have this thing in stock Anyhow, let's move on with fantasy. There's another one that is rather great. Um, the only rose from the novel, of course, of The Little Prince. Um, I will not try to pronounce the French version. <laughs> French original, Le Petit Prince? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, anyhow, we are talking about the 86302, 500 pieces. It's 10 by 10 centimeters and 21 in height. Uh, Pantasy is asking for $23 US and that's 4.6 cents a piece. Um, that sounds rather rather reasonable from the pricing point of view, especially considering that you have this enormous glass piece in, in quotes. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's made out of plastic, but that is rather interesting that it's not the bid version like the, I don't know, Lego ship in a bottle, these kind of pieces that are, for instance, also used by Mold King for the uh, Novaton Botanical Garden I just talked about, but rather it seems to be made out of one single piece. So that's a special piece that I guess they have custom created for this set. Um, there's a minifigure in there, of course, a minifigure that might bring you into trouble, at least over here in, in most parts of Europe, um, because again, Lego design uh, on this one. But anyhow, I think it's a, a very beautiful set and very nice, especially if you're a lover of the book. The book actually, um, I think is from 1943. It has been translated into 505 different languages and dialects. To my knowledge, that makes it after the Bible and the Quran are uh, the most translated book in the world, which is um, interesting. Anyhow, let's move on to uh, the next set from Pantasy, um, the 2503 Festival Limited Christmas Elk Baby, 733 pieces. Um, you can buy it from Pantasy for $59, that's eight cents a piece. And yeah, it's 17 by 15 centimeters and 22 centimeters in height. And I think it's like a smartphone stand and yeah, I mean, I don't know. For me, that is not a design that I would can map into, into let's say Christmas. For me, that's not because it's orange and everything. So for me, that's not really a Christmas color scheme. For me, Christmassy is more like dark green, dark red or red, dark green, white, gold maybe. Um, but yeah, here we go. You got an orange elk from fantasy. Okay, that is about that for new sets. So let's move to our recently introduced new category, Mocks of the Week. And we will start with the Victor Creel House uh, from Stranger Things. Um, uh, the, I think, very well be or very beloved uh, mystery series from Netflix, I think. I must admit, I have never watched it. Actually, I'm not the biggest Netflix customer. Usually, I only activate my Netflix subscription from time to time to watch a little bit of Star Trek. And, of course, when a new Witcher series is coming out. So, Stranger Things, not really my cup of tea. I'm not a mystery guy. Never never have been. Um, but, anyhow, and uh, here we go. You have the Victor Creel House. And it has been designed by Pontus German Mox. Um, that the last name at least sounds a bit German. But anyhow, um, here's the picture of the original. This design has 1,700 pieces. And while you can't see much here in these pictures, what is going on that I'm um, in the inside, at least from the outside, I think it is a pretty beautiful house. And, and I really like the oval design. It looks like, you know, it looks mystical and, and, you know, like it looks like a house that has a lot of secrets, let's put it that way. So I think from that point of view, it's very well done. What is interesting is that he's only asking for $2 for the entire manual. So that is that is pretty, pretty cool, I must say. Let's move on. We have a new alternate build from PL Mox. I have actually built one of PL Mox's design and he's, I mean, he has done a little bit of architecture. Actually, what I built was an alternate build 
of the White House from Lego. And here we go with, um, however, he's mostly active. Um, or most of his designs are around um, alternative builds for modulars. Like, okay, I have built here the Villa Tugendhat. That's a design that I did um, out of my all-time favorite Lego set, one of my all-time favorite Lego sets, the White House. But as you can see, what he has done most and foremost and is alternate builds out of um, out of modulars, especially assembly square, a ton of very cool designs out of assembly square. Some of these designs, for instance, this one here, I even like more than the original. And he's even selling huge packages. So for instance, here, you can get an eight in one uh, deal from him for 30 bucks. You get eight alternate builds. Like it's an entire city. It's unbelievable. Anyhow, here we go. There's a new one, the Birch Bowling Alley. I want to talk about from this week. Um, and of course, an alternate build. You can see it from the color, I guess that color here down below. You get only uh, from the bookshop, of course, the 10 uh, 270. Um, here in this alternate build, he's using 2009 parts that I think what was the bookshop like two and a half thousand so that's that's a pretty good pretty good number and um yeah i think it's a nice uh, um alternate build um i'm i've talked about this before i'm a gigantic fan of alternate builds because they just give you a lego set in your life and especially and i do believe that there's a lot of good arguments for okay maybe instead of buying new sets all the time maybe just you know pick up a set that you already had maybe it's already gotten a little bit dusty you know being somewhere in a shelf or somewhere in a, in a corner in your in your city and here we go you have a new building that's maybe also a good time to make it make the pieces get them tidy and shiny again and then you have a new building and then i don't know after two months you can move again and pierre mox is is i think quite one of the most active designers i know in this space but there is a ton of of cool alternate builds out there. Speaking of cool designs, actually this one here, the modular um, Parisian, Parisian, Paris, Parisian, um, how's it pronounced? Paris, Parisian, I guess. Café by Carlierti, I guess that's also based on a French name. I think I saw it somewhere here down below. Yeah, Nicolas Carrier. Um, so pronounce the short one wherever you want, however you want. But anyhow, great and beautiful module building i must say i think this one should go very well together with the boutique hotel from lego the recent one but i really love this design i don't know what i love more about it obviously it's french but this thing will look great in almost every city a very beautiful design great interior also by the way great art design here all of these pictures and photographs I really love it. And even, you know, you have tiles on every floor, which I always like, while at the same time, you can still put a ton of minifigures in there, right? You have the, the correct um, um, chairs here and tables and everything. So I really, really, really like the idea and really like the design. Um, rather beautiful building, but it's not an ordinary build. So you have to get all the, uh, let me check. 3053 pieces on your own which may be an expensive endeavor then we have another thing that is kind of a little bit of a hybrid um it's a corner winter village fire station from brick artisan um it has 1181 pieces it is not an alternate build of the winter village fire station but rather a modification if you will you need actually 50 65 additional pieces personally i'm not the biggest fan of these because it's from a logistic standpoint much more complicated in my in my point of view um, than a pure alternate build because with a pure alternate build you just take the original lego building right you you build it again and all the passes parts that you don't need for the alternate build which is usually i mean i've never seen an alternate build that alternate build that uses all of the parts so you just put them in the back and then you can always you know move on to another alternate build or go back to the original design whenever you want however the moment you mix extra pieces in you know you're in sorting country and stuff becomes more complicated from a logistics point of view but anyhow it's only 65 pieces and the overall set is not that big so i think it is rather beautiful to have this corner building could make help you to make um your winter village a bit more compact plus it is actually can be combined with other designs by brick artisan for instance here you see a picture 
how it would look like and with this let's say more compact setup that of his designs compared to the original lego designs and i actually really like this idea um you know going a bit more compact is something that i personally always like then there's another one that is not really a mark and it's actually um a sixth one if you will or one two three no it's actually just five um, the little water lamp skate from Pimta Bricks. I think I talked about Pimta Bricks design, yeah, the big corner garage last week. And this one um, came into my eye. First of all, it's free of charge. And I, I like the idea here that's not, I mean, it's not like a complicated mark. Um, but it is, I mean, for those of you who you're thinking about building your own landscape, etc., etc., but you know, you have a bit of a lack of ideas. How can I do this? What kind of building techniques do I need? What kind of pieces and parts do I need? And here you have an idea. Obvi obviously, these tiny ducks might be not your cup of tea or all of these um, actually um, plant things might be too expensive for your tongues because if you want to have them from Lego, they rather are. But nevertheless, it gives you an idea, gives you a manual, you can check the building techniques and it gives you a Bricklink XML file. I guess, I guess that is what is behind this XML. It means you have a, have a piece list. And if you decide to go into that direction, you can go to, I don't know, Bricklink or WeBrick if you want to buy GoBricks pieces, for instance, and, you know, just go ahead and and have, have a starting point to, to move on from there. So I really like this idea. I also like the idea. I mean, I'm, I'm always a big advocate of, you know, good designers get, you know, you can ask for money, that's totally fine. But that Pimta Bricks is saying, okay, for this simple thing, he's not charging anything, is actually a great move. Thanks a lot, that is really helping the community. Anyhow, let's move on to Lego Ideas. And here, of course, we have the big announcement, 39 entries, um, that means uh, designs that had 10,000 supporters on the Lego Ideas platform. And now we have, or they have picked four sets or four designs that they actually want to make into sets. That is a new record number. Usually they did two, maybe two and a half by means that they said, okay, a third set is kind of on our optional list. Um, but that they, they have picked four is actually good news for all of these people who entered designs. I'm not 100% sure why they moved to four. It could be part of a generous strategy that they want to produce more idea sets um, you know Lego has in general of course broadened their portfolio more and more over the years I think they're doing more than 300 new products per year now if I'm not miscounting so maybe they're just thinking about you know broadening the portfolio or maybe it was just a one-time thing because actually we will go through the designs now there's only one big design in there or the other three are rather small so this could be a reason as well that they decide okay let's go for a few more sets in smaller scale anyhow the first thing is the lego insects uh, design from jose maria and i'm pretty sure i've pronounced this wrong hachiroku 24 and yeah, it's a bunch of insects. I really like this design. It's not really my cup of tea, I must say, insects. But hey, here we go. And there are some interesting building techniques in there. I'm, I'm really looking forward to what Lego designers are making out of this idea. And then we have the one large set, the R design, I should rather say. It's from Let's Go, uh, Thomas Lyon. Uh, and it's the uh, Orient Express. Yes, Lego is moving again into trains. I mean, it's not like that they have skipped trains entirely um, I mean we had the crocodile um, we had of course the big Harry Potter train however I do believe a lot of folks would rather prefer to forget this one <laughs> so that is of course is the big question is this going to be a train that you can put actually on the track and motorize um, because I mean this should be obvious but of course after the Harry Potter a train that we recently saw which you could not put on a regular train and could not motorize um, at least not by default um, the way it comes from lego this of course is now the open question i i i just can't believe that they i mean if you would have asked me half a year ago hey would lego do a large train that you know cannot actually put on a track i would have said no way that that would be crazy but hey you know here we go so uh you know, it's all open, the races are open, but I do believe this thing is going to be a train that you can actually put on a track. And I do hope that LEGO is really creating a beautiful design because this one, the original ideas entry was already quite amazing. And I think, you know, that's, that's LEGO's chance to make all of you train lovers out there happily, um, you know, once and for all, or not once and for all, but maybe once again. <laughs> 
that would be, I think, rather precise. Anyhow, the other one is Tales of the Space Age. Again, a rather small design. And also from a brick build perspective, very, very simple. So that, that is really something that surprised me that they would do this thing. So I'm really curious what Lego is going to make out of it by means of price, complexity, but... Um, and of course, also here, I mean, are, the, are we going to see some prints in here? Or are, are these, for instance, if they want to put these half moon in there, is this, are these going to be stickers? So there's a lot of interesting questions. So let's see how this goes. Um, this is the one, the most curious one, because I just can't imagine how Lego wants to make a set of that that people are willing to pay a ton of money for, because th this design is rather simple, I must say. And then we have, and I guess this main after the train be one of the fan favorites the polaroid one step the sx70 of course a classic of you know camera and photography history um for so many people plus of course it's very iconic industrial design and i guess i guess you know it goes in the same direction as like the musical stuff that they have done like the piano um the typewriter this kind of stuff you know things that people build like like to look at and put on the shelf Anyhow, um, four designs, and that is for the last wave, the first wave of 2022. And here we go. Let's go to also two new designs for the next wave that made the 10,000 supporters. There we have the Zoo by Kotlovak. Um, 10,000 supporters and what I really like again this is like real pictures we are not talking about computer graphics out of studio but rather something that has been actually built and I do like the design I mean I mean having a zoo I mean I, when I saw this the first time I was just thinking oh boy is, uh, we, sh we need a real zoos that are like this right with multiple floors and everything you know moving in between trees it kind of reminds a little bit like like Endor like the Lego Star Wars and or set um it's 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 rather beautiful do i think they are going to do this in ideas i just can't imagine i think for me that is not ideas material what lego usually is looking for no license nothing you can just put on a shelf nothing that doesn't even look like lego which of course like i said typewriter you know the globe and stuff that they have done it's also not license heavy so i'm not sure for me that is more like maybe icons but of course it's a zoo so most and foremost city but nevertheless i really like the the effort and the approach and i think yeah it's an inspiring design and then let's move on to the old western train station i mean yeah it's western that's a little bit like castle right it's, it's just you know this stuff works on ideas and yeah i mean why not they kind of revived um revived castle with the um, medieval blacksmiths so why not reviving western uh, with ideas with the ideas program uh, again i really like the design um there's even a ton of folks in there like the sheriff and miss daisy and uh yeah very beautiful minifigures a beautiful design of course i always prefer entire buildings not these uh likely six stud depths thingies um, but rather a full-blown um, house like I don't know home alone or something like that but nevertheless it is beautifully done a lot of detail in there and like I said the minifigures are just hilarious um, so here we go that has been the week um, I hope you like the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or comment or even better subscribe to the channel. For you podcast listeners, please leave a review, comment or like on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next week.